In this video we're going to create a floor plan that's the scale and matching our Memphis Museum that we've designed previously. The first step is to go to 123D Design and we're going to take a screenshot from above with perspective off. So if we come to the menu up here, make sure it's on orthographic, make sure it's on the top view and if you still have it on mat materials only, either put it to one of the ones with the outlines. If we press the print screen button and then paste into Photoshop or something similar, we'll end up with a picture that we can save. Have a look at your rendering that you've done and take close attention to where your building is in your chosen site. There is a link near this video where you need to bring up the same site and then draw the two points. For me, I've chosen to do the corner and the corner as close as you can to where it would be. And this will very importantly spit out a number, 85 meters for me. Back at homestyler.com, and please note at the time of recording, we're using the beta version, which means we add slash floor plan here. Okay, so we're gonna take that image and we're gonna click on upload background. And we're going to find it. After it uploads, we're going to move the two points to the same place that we had them on our map. And we're going to enter the same distance, so 85 meters. Please note that it's currently set to millimeters, so therefore 85 meters is going to be 85,000. And we import this, and our outline is now here for us to scale, so we can start drawing. To do this, we're going to use the draw wall by centerline. Now you will need to take note that you only have to draw one floor for this exercise. So for me, I'm going to do the ground floor, which is going to have the two squares and then the circle, because this part is actually off the ground, I don't need to do it. This tool is pretty straightforward to use, especially now that we're tracing. This one I have to do a bit of an estimate because I can't see the corner. Once you've drawn it in, you should see the outline and then you press enter. We can still come in and select and move this one. Press escape to exit the tool and then use the arrow and you can see I've got it much better aligned. Still looks like it needs to come up a little bit more, it's also a line up here, which it now does. Okay, for the round ones, we have to do a series of straight lines. So once again, we go by center line. that one again, zoom in so it doesn't snap to the grid. It will try and snap to the grid, you just have to zoom in far enough to fight it. and press enter to finish. Okay, by going to that and then selecting nothing, we wipe our background and we have the opportunity to come in and tidy up some of these walls. OK, 
Okay, that will do. Okay, now we get to the fun bit. So just to explain what we're seeing on the screen here, you would have noticed this little triangle. This is actually the viewpoint for the 3D view. You can see the 3D view over on this side. We can make it bigger and smaller. We can position the camera where we want to see. If we click on this button here, we switch to 3D view and I can click and drag on the screen and also you'll find that the up down left right arrows work and you can walk around inside your building we reach the fun part of the project which is decorating the room and to do that we have these three main buttons down the side anywhere where we want to put in wall openings doors, windows, things like that they're all built in so for instance let's put in a door so click on doors we've got our various options here I'm going to go for sliding door the picture will eventually come up you can click on plus and then it will appear inside your model should appear inside your model okay like so you do need a wall wide enough to fit them which is what the issue is here there's one okay once we click it we've placed it and it is in place if we come back to our building elements we can see some of the other things available for us to do also have some furniture here so it's up to you to populate your gallery and make it look as realistic as possible so things like kitchen probably not gonna suit us but art and posters might be great for making this look realistic also furniture like plinths that sculptures and things like that could be put on top of will also help it works in much the same way you click on your category decide what you would like and then click to place it in the view. While it's selected, you can move it around, use these arrows, lift it off the ground, and simply click off it when we're done. Clicking back on it in future will bring up those controls. The last really important thing is the style button, and this is how we change our wall floor and roof coverings. So I might like my floor to be tiled. So now I come and find the tiles that I would like, Hit the plus and now click on the surface and it sometimes can take a few seconds there we go and our tiles are in if I switch to 3d view sorry 2d view you can see that this is actually a very very big room as you would expect from a museum being as big as it is so it's up to you to fill the space, make it functional, make it exciting to be in. Once you've done that, one other thing you like, might to consider from the catalog is things like people. We're trying to make this look as realistic as possible, so we might insert Dave here, and now we'll find that he's three-dimensional try and set up sculptures and paintings and then populate your space with people looking at it will make it a lot more realistic one other thing worth noting is in such a big building we're probably not going to have a normal 2.2 meter roof so if we come up to the settings we can actually put in a global wall height unfortunately a limitation of this is that all of the roof heights need to be the same but in a space like this you might find it's more like 8,000 which is 8 meters and visually that is looking like an internal space perhaps that's a little bit too high but you can fiddle with this number and it will update for you later on once you've got everything in place which I don't but you'll put a lot more care into yours you're going to come up and click the render button we set up our camera knowing that the blue box is what's going to be captured 
we set the size to large we can also change some things with the lighting and then we click the render button now this does go to a queue you can see there's 57 in place at the moment I have one I did previously that was a few places ahead and eventually this bar will fill up once the cloud computers are finished processing all the images and you'll have a JPEG here which you can download that's really high quality nice lighting, nice textures, something worth showing off but you might need to wait even till the next day to make sure that it's done